How's it going everybody? Rye Bray here today and we are back with our Hut 23 No Money Spent Road to Glory, the Road to Bread here in episode number 14 guys and we're a couple weeks into the season and the team's looking good we've got hut champs today and it's not a lot of hut champs i didn't have a lot of time this weekend to play very very busy again but we are going to get up to five wins i'm only going to show you all uh, four wins in this video because i decided to play just one video late uh a sunday evening just to get one game in to get to five we have four wins in this episode we start off hot and i love it but what you guys are seeing right now those are our squad battles rewards. We are going to get 7,500 coins, which pushes us up over uh, uh, 110,000 coins. And we have a player's pack and an elite pack. So honestly, these rewards are tradable. I think they're great. I think if you guys can play like maybe four or five games, including one against the team of the week, you should be able to get this. Uh, our first pull is going to be a Tage Thompson. Then we're going to pull a nice little Trevor Zegris here. This card, the base stats on the front of the card look insane. And going under the hood, 88 speed, 89 wrist shot accuracy, great hands. It's a card that instantly is going to fit into the lineup. And I'm pretty, pretty pumped to pull uh, that Zegris. You know, uh, it's a good pull. I was complaining last week's rewards episode that we had no luck. Well, EA heard me and they're going to drop a little luck into the account for us. But uh, we already had a tra uh, tradable Tage Thompson. So I'm going to send the other one straight to the trade pile. Uh, but here you guys can see, I'm pretty excited to have this card. 92 puck control, 91 deking. Um, his, his his defensive awareness at 86 is not bad. Stick checking at 84, face offs at 80, right? So it's a card that at least for now is going to play uh, center for us. We will probably move him to the wing uh, in a later episode, right? As, as time goes on, his card's not going to be as good. But the good news is it is tradable. So anybody with a um, X-Factor Zegris, you know, maybe uh, from the pre-order packs or somebody re-rolls a Zegris, right? We'll have him uh, to sell if, if his card goes up, if he's a team of the week, if he gets some pretty cool cards or something like that. Uh, but for now, I want to use him. He's He looks pretty sweet. But this uh, player's pack doesn't look to be very good, or this might have been the, I think this was the elite pack. Not a very great pack, if you ask me. Um, just a bunch of 80 overalls, nothing too exciting there, but we pulled ourselves a Trevor Zegris and that's really the, the best luck that we could have asked for. Um, and I want to just take a look at what he goes for on the market, right? Do we want to sell Zegris if he's like a 30 K card? Maybe I don't think he is a 30 K card. He's obviously not. Uh, but we'll take a look at the auction house here and you can see he's going for about 15 K 18 K right? 15, 16,000 right there. Um, Scrolling through 15 and a half, right? So he's 15, 16,000 coins. I'm going to hang on to him. I don't plan on selling him. I wasn't going to sell him unless I was wowed by the price. Uh, just because I'd rather use the card than, than than sell it for coins. I mean, I'm still, I still have 111,000 coins um, that we need to use. But I am going to do my silver re-rolls. And guys, we're going to get another pretty good pull out of our silver upgrade uh, set. So this is the one I do every day just to get the daily objectives out of the way. Um, you guys can see this was before we opened our squad battles rewards, hence the coins are back down to 102,000. Uh, I wanted to show you guys the Zegris first, but we do our silver upgrades. Go to our unopened pack, our two gold players pack, not gold rare, not 80 plus, just gold players. The first player we're going to pull is Peter Mrazek. We also get another goalie though, who is a purple. Igor Shostirkin is our new goaltender ladies and gentlemen and with that we are ready to jump into champs i'll show you guys the rewards again uh last uh weekend we finished with seven wins this weekend we finished with five right i'm not gonna you know hide it from you guys it's already tuesday um i've just been too busy to get this video up uh and actually record this part of the video for you but you guys can see the lines that we're rocking with is debrinkat stamkos huberto all with a couple x factor or synergies uh active uh, only Stamkos's X Factor is uh, activated right now. We're going to put Zegris on the second line between Pasta and Kachuk. I'm pretty excited. He's going to have a puck on a string active too, which I think is honestly this year one of the best because you can get those in tight forehand, backhand, and get it in in close. We got Natalie Spooner, who we pulled uh, in a previous episode. Uh, her magnetic's only worth one, um, so she's going between. She's going to be on the wing for me and and Marshan, and then this Timu Solane. Uh, I don't know if it's still there, but there was a free Mighty Ducks pack, uh, and you could pick pick any one of those players. And I picked Solane just because I figured a fast winger is always good, uh, and he's more fun to play with trying to get these challenges done. But there is that Quinn Hughes that we pulled that uh, game day uh, fantasy hockey. He is going to move up over Brian Campbell. I like him a little bit better. 
uh, than Brian Campbell. And then there's Shastirkin with the Magician active, which we needed. And he's going to have his Fly Swatter ability active as well. You guys can see here is everybody who is going to be getting um, uh, X-Factor abilities or Superstar abilities, if you will, um, on our team. Going into Hot Champs again. Um, Svechnikov still has Snipe. It is going to be worthwhile. Magnetic is one, obviously. I don't have any of Kachuk's active just because I don't think they're worthwhile yet. Maybe later in the year when his speed goes up, Big Rig will be available. Uh, or, or I should say um, would be good for us to activate. But I really don't think uh, it, it, it's necessary right now. But here we go, jumping into our first game of the weekend. Uh, bros, I don't know how to say that name, but we are <laughs> playing somebody who's got the Quebec Ramparts uh, logos and I believe jerseys as well. Uh, but we are on home ice here and you can see Shastirkin back there right above the versus sign. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be playing with Shastirkin. You know, we're not using Ottinger. He was a great, great goalie for while we had him. Um, but we are moving up in the world and we got a really nice pull there. But we are going to play some good defense. Stamkos gets the puck knocked off of him. Carlson can't quite get it out. Um, he is going to get it around to Kane, though. Kane goes back to the point to Gerard, to Schmidt, to Gerard. It's blocked by Solane. Solane gets it poked off, but he's still going to carry on. And we find Svechnikov. He over pursues. They get a lucky bounce. I probably should have scored that one, but the poke check goes between the legs of Carey Price, a card that I personally have not liked at all this year. I know some people have really enjoyed his card. I'm not one of those that has. Obviously, I replay. I had him for the first uh, 10 games of Hot Champs, replaced him with Ottinger, and did much better in the second 10 of Hot Champs. But Shastirkin holds on for the faceoff, and we've got Zegers versus Stamkos on the faceoff in the defensive zone here. I get pushed. It's pretty clean. Pasta comes in, and that's pretty easy. I, you guys have seen me score plenty of goals like that, uh, and our opponent does it right back to me. I'm not upset. I just should have played that one better. I... If I know my opponent is like good at faceoffs and is able to manipulate, you know, and win faceoffs, not just, you know, somebody I'm just pushing the entire time, then I'm trying to play a little bit more defensive to defend against that. But Pasta with a good defensive play is going to get up to me and it gets knocked off. Pasta bounces off some bodies, holds onto the puck and finds Spooner on the back door who gets her first goal for the club and gives us a two to one lead. Our one goal advantage is restored and that's her first goal. But Jerry Meehan moves back up to the top in points leaders for the team. A card that I honestly took just because he was a saber. Wasn't too focused on it. But you can see our opponent here tries to go across, but to bring it with a good poke check, Campbell finds Kachuk. Kachuk around the outside. Kachuk is going to go ballerina dancing to the front of the net, and he's going to put it home. And we have, I mean, I was, okay, so I clipped that. It wasn't that impressive, guys. I was vibing. I was listening to the uh, to Big Booty Mix. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, but it's an hour-long mashup of songs. Really, really enjoyed it. It's on SoundCloud. It's fantastic. Um, and I hit that on the beat drop, and I was absolutely loving it. So I was having a lot of fun playing. I was smiling, laughing. You know, probably the most fun I've had playing Hut Champs uh, this season um, is this episode here. But Spooner is going to get a round two. Goes back door. Marshan's crashing, and well, doesn't have to do much. And we're going to do the Marshan Selly there, because why not? Uh, we're up 4-1, guys. This game's going really, really well. A great start comparatively to, to last weekend. Last weekend was very, very bad for us. But Brad Marshan continues, you know, to just be there. Puts up an average amount of points on the third line. He's not getting a ton of opportunities. But our opponent quits um, midway through. I dumped the puck down on a, on a power play. or Our opponent's power play, and I dumped the puck. Um, he went and got it and then quit. So uh, there was no goal to show you there. I just played solid fundamental penalty killing and he quit. He just figured it wasn't worthwhile. Um, but we do win our first game four to one. You guys can see pretty uh, pretty back and forth battle. He had more time on attack, but again, they were just circling the outside, really not getting to anywhere threatening. And every time they tried to cut to the net, I was able to shut it down. So our next opponent is closer. Closer with the next. So... Vancouver Canucks fan with that McCann card. Guys, that McCann card looks so good, but I think I might go with Chris Letang um, when I do get that 88 player. Um, that Chris Letang card looks insane. Such a good skater um, and really, really good. But Mian is going to be able to pick up the puck there. Fires it around to Pasta. Pasta does get it knocked off, but is able to keep with it, shielding the opponent from the puck. We're going to go to Brian Campbell, who makes one miss, makes another miss, makes another miss, and roofs it in the top left corner, high blocker side. And we do, in fact, 
have a one goal lead yet again another early start for us now in the last weekend's worth of video guys you remember i blew plenty of leads but here comes ovechkin he's gonna cut on his back end. he finds trocek who is able to get the good backhand off but we do play it pretty solidly right he messes up the glitch wrap and we go over to spooner spooner now with the puck is gonna get it back door to martian and our opponent just doesn't have time for this. He doesn't, I mean, the dive, yes, I get. You probably should have stopped it, but it didn't go right into your body. It's a little bit wonky. I never recommend diving like that unless you're absolutely desperate. Um, but to be fair, our opponent was a little bit out of position there on the two-on-one, able to get around him with Spooner and fire that thing back door to Marshan. But uh, a 3 nothing win, technically, it was a 2 nothing game. Our opponent quit at 2-0. It was just um, just one of those, again, pretty even, pretty solid. I'm taking my chances, keeping their shots to low percentage shots uh, and letting them circle around the outside. Uh, and here's another team name that I can't pronounce. I don't know why. Can you guys just be like hockey team? Can that like be your name so I can pronounce it in the videos here? Please, like something simple, like the good guys. Something, just something I can pronounce, not French. English, preferably, uh, but we get a good four check here. Forces an errant pass. Brian Campbell picks it up. Campbell steps in. He is able to dance his way around, but Fox is going to pick him off. And now here comes our opponent's Trevor Zegras. We get a poke check off and a great, great back check by Svechnikov, who finds Debrinkat, goes up to me in a little dangle dangle. He's going to pretend to stop. Well, I did, in fact, stop, but I pretended to cut to the front of the net. And we're going to shoot there. We're able to pick up the rebound with Kopitar and bury that thing into a wide open cage. Goalie, goalie was pretty far out. Couldn't quite get to the puck in time. And our opponent had gone down to try and block the shot, which means he was out of commission entirely. Kopitar, quicker to the puck. And then we jump all the way to the third period. But an early one here. We just start with the opening faceoff. Debrinkat goes around the net, is able to get around him. We do lose the puck, but a good forecheck. He's unable to get rid of it. A really bad pass by me, all things considered. But we switch to Stamkos, get a good poke check off. He switches to the goalie. And well, I wanted to go forehand there anyway, and I would have scored. I don't know why Huberto did not go forehand. I don't know what his idea was. Maybe I was rushing it, a little nervous. Um, but we did get a little fortunate there. I should have scored anyway, so I'm not going to apologize for that one. But a really nice tight turn there by Huberto. But just, I wasn't able to get a good pass away. But then we're going to look off Stamkos for a second as Huberto gets around the outside. He's going to protect the cross crease, which means I'm around and behind and able to cut to the front of the net. Huberto getting back-to-back -back goals in tight. And that's where, guys, I'm saying puck on a string is probably my favorite this year. It was a meme for me last year. Me and the moderators used to joke every time puck on a string came up. But this year, I feel like it's really important and actually really beneficial, uh, especially going back uh, forehand, backhand, or, you know, cutting tight in front of the net. Uh, here we go. Solane doing some dangles in the offensive zone. He's going to fire it to Hamilton. Hamilton back to Solane in tight. Svechnikov gets it and is going to roof it there. Obviously, Schneip didn't activate, but it felt good knowing that I could just shoot it with Svechnikov. And if it does, it's going to be an absolute ripper. But he buries that one anyway, hence why he's still on the third line. We're up 4 0 here. Huberto is going to get around. We find a Brinkhead who then, ah, just solid shot. Slows up, goalie leaves the whole right side of the net open, glove hand, and Debrinkat finds it, buries it, and that's going to be all she wrote for this one, guys. 25 seconds left, we're up 5-0, and we won our first three games of Hut Champs. Our placement score is going to be higher than we have ever seen on the channel before. Um, a 4-1, a 3-0 rage quit, two rage quits, actually. Um, and there we go, we are able to be 3-0 to start. 13-29 round points, things you love to see. Um, we're doing well, right? And again, this one, this one was a bit more dominant. This one was really, I had a lot of shots, a lot of possession. Um, and that one was not one of those where it was even. I just was more clinical and had played good defense. But our opponent here is Tampa Champs. Thank you, C. This is a name I can pronounce. Even if I don't want to pronounce it, I can at least pronounce it. The Tampa Champs versus the Road to Bread here in game number four of the weekend. We're hot. We're 3-0 right now. We are looking good. And here we go. We get in with Huberto, can't quite get the shot away, and there goes McDavid, finding that Bowen Byram that I thought I might want. McCann dangles a bit, is able to find Pasternak. I'm not sure what Blake is doing there. Um, I don't know if he's trying to cover for me, but he's he's collapsing a little too high, right? He's protecting the slot from the shot, um, and our opponent finds a streaking Pasternak for the goal. And right there, oh, Pasta could have gotten that one. 
We would have been on a break. We were so, 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 so close. But our opponent is able to get it back to the point, take a wrist shot, and Sarah Nurse is able to deflect that one and beats Igor Shostyrkin. And it's 2-0 in the first 10 minutes. Here we go. At the end of the first period, though, Solane tries to make a break for it. Uh, the puck bounces, ricochets. It goes to Pasta. It's 3-0 in the first period. I'm not battling back. You guys can see I'm getting dominated. It's 11 to 2 in shots. So yes, those couple, the deflection and that one that bounced right to Pasta, it's a bit fortunate, but he made his own luck. And our final opponent is EA is a joke. Um, and I, I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, but I do kind of like the whole branding situation going on with this person's team. But Stamkos is able to pick off the puck on a good four check. We're going to wait around with it. Finds Riley. Maybe. Uh, Huberto does, is the quickest one to the loose puck. And we're, I've never seen an animation like that, by the way. I've never seen the goalie fly off the post like that. I don't know if it got deflected or something like that, which is why the goalie slid over and then it, you know, slid in. But hey, Huberto crashed the net. Puck on a string, quick hands. Gets it in tight. And we get a 1-0 goal. And guys, I knew this was the last game of the episode. The last game I could play of the day, really. Uh, so I shut it down. I played amazing defense. Marshan, though... Gets poked. A really unfortunate poke there as we were going to crash for it. Dougie Hamilton can't quite get there. And he's able to find a streaking Jack Eichel and ties the game in the third period with 11 8 Yeah, guys. In this one, I played very conservatively. Played very defensively. Tried to lock it down. I was tired. I wanted lunch. <laughs> and I didn't want to lose this game because, you know, we were up one nothing. But he's able to get it with Giroux. He's circling around with it. Goes to White Cloud. White Cloud point to point deflected by Kaprizov in just in the span of no time at all. We are now down two to one. Our opponent gets a bit fortunate there. The, I mean, the breakaway is fine. The, the And then the tip is fine. You make your own luck, like I, uh, I always say. Uh, but Blake is able to keep it in on the forecheck. Finds Huberto. Huberto circles around with it. Finds Stamco. Stammer finds Huberto. Cutting. I absolutely love that. That cut right there where you stop up with the guy in the high slot. And your opponent thinks you're about to let it rip, so they come after you, and you slide it right behind them where they were, uh, and you score with that guy that you just passed with. Oh, mm, love it. But here we go. In overtime, a defensive zone draw. But I told you guys at the beginning of this episode, I'm doing everything I can to prevent this. And we do actually get the poke off there with Blake. He's going to move it up. Zegris eventually gets the puck. We stop. We get it across to Pasta and bury it in the empty cage. Now, guys, I dominated overtime. I swear, I, I was dominant. I was like, I cannot lose this game. I'm going to win this game. And we're going to get out of this episode going 4-1. And, and I was determined to do it. Um, and, and right there, again, a little bit of a lucky bounce. But you make your own luck when you're consistently in front of the net and just dominating. Uh, getting shots, getting pucks in tight, in close, right? Puck on a string for Zegris again. Uh, we're able to go a little forehand, backhand. It's It makes, I wanted to pass, and it does get there eventually. Um, and I'll take it. Listen, I'm going to take wins when I can get them. But David Pasternak is your overtime hero and gets us to a 4-1 in one record. That's why I said, guys, we were only one win away from five. I played just two, three games maybe um, off camera. Didn't record them for you because I didn't know. Like, if I won the first game I played, I was not... I was going to stop. I was going to stop right there, and we weren't going to make an episode out of it. So I didn't want to record uh, a bunch of gameplay that, you know, maybe it was going to be a three-minute video, right? I didn't want that for you guys. But we do end up getting to, I think, five and three. I went one and two that night. It was after the Bills had lost. Very sad. Um, so definitely not in the right headspace to win those games, but a very tight game here. Uh, back and forth. Really, again, the shots maybe a bit deceiving. I'm letting people shoot from further out. I'm letting them shoot from bad angles, and I am there to pick up the rebound and get it out. But... That is this one, guys. We have now 130,000 coins because I got a lot of objectives done. Things are looking great. I kind of want to spend these 130K. I don't know if I should just keep holding it, but I kind of want to buy maybe two players, three players that could be dominant, right? Get Earn the Chris Letang, buy a couple players that are dominant. We have our goalie and we're good to go. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this one. We'll have the Hut Champs rewards coming out Thursday. They come out Wednesday and I got rivals rewards and I'll have that episode Thursday, but that's all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more and I will see you guys in the next one.